Ronaldo Offerman of Master School Dances. I want to talk to you a little bit about the MidiCon, give you a walkthrough on how to set it up because there's been a lot of requests for it. Right now you are seeing the screen with the master page and I just made this profile, so it's a brand new profile, and I added the NO color beam. To the right you're going to see a webcam view of the MidiCon. So first of all, how do you add the MidiCon? You're going to go up here where's this controller tab and uh, choose console. You're going to notice that it says right here, preset ID, zero, nothing has been added, not a big deal. We're just going to right click on that. And you're going to see where it says console and you're going to add MidiCon big because you don't want small. That's what she said. Okay, awesome. Now, how do we know this is hooked up? Okay, you'll notice this is working. Now, the LEDs here, you know, the uh, LEDs and all that are lit up, which is good. See, right? Oh, see how that's not working? Okay. That means that I need to unplug and unplug on mine because I was messing with it earlier. This shouldn't happen to you, but just in case. There we go. So you'll notice how it's all synced up, 4 and 4. Now this is what's great is, again, you know, oh, if you, somebody unplugs it or anything like that, it's not going to screw up your show. It'll say version 10, I guess, the firmware thing or whatever. And uh, you can go back to where you were. Okay, so great. I like that. So, okay, so again, you'll notice right now everything is running. You'll see the LEDs are lighting up. Okay. We're going to go over why that's going to suck in a minute and how you can work around it. There's a little firmware thing that I wasn't a big fan of, but ultimately it works. Awesome. Okay, so what's going to happen and what's the, how do you assign something? Well, the first thing I want to assign is the master. The easiest way to do this is, first of all, by going to the master dimmer, right? And um, I'm just going to right-click on the master dimmer. I have to shift-click or control-click. I'm sorry. You see where it says link to console and then it says general dimmer. What well, that means is saying that the only button I can really choose is a general dimmer. You don't want to use one of these buttons here. You want to use a general dimmer. So I'm going to go ahead and click that. It says waiting for MIDI command. I'm just going to move it. Bam. If you use virtual DJ, it's kind of like the same thing. Now you'll notice that as I move this, the general dimmer now opens up and down. Woohoo! Great. Blackout button. Does not work instantly. Duh. Well, what you do is you go to your pages and I'm gonna do the endo color beam I'm just gonna right click link to console enable disable DMX output and there we go now I have a blackout obviously I want to do this with all the other fixtures enable disable DMX output now why is this exciting let's say you're doing a show and I just did one this past weekend where even when I blacked everything out, I didn't want the blackout button to control the, um, oh, what is it called? To control the freaks because the freaks were over for overall light. So I just right click on master. Well, let's see how I can do it on the Mac. I'm sorry, shift right click on master. And then uh, there's the general dimmer there. Awesome. I'm going to right click on their blackout. See how it says NO beam or whatnot? Let's say I have one for the freaks. And I didn't want to black out to, you know, control the freaks. I can just uncheck it. And it's not going to control the freaks. So let's say, you know, if you want the blackout to not hit certain lights during your show, you just tell them not to for that particular scene. Exciting. I know. How do you control yourself, right? Okay, so now this works with pretty much everything here. Because, you know, let's say, for example, I don't have any programs made, right? But uh, let's say the color mixing all. Okay. I just right click. I link to console. And I'm going to do button activation. Now, button activation means that as soon as I click, it's going to activate that button. Okay? Now, whenever I click on anything, see there? Awesome. Okay? May not, if for some reason it turns into a flash button like you see there, which, which some of them, it will do this. It'll do the flash button, not always, but with certain buttons, it turns them into flash. You just double click here. And you choose an active level on and off, outside active level, disable. What it's saying is active level, when you push a button, that's active. When you disable the button or unrelease a button, that's outside. So inside, outside. So our active level, we want on and off. So when we push this, it goes on and off, on and off. Or maybe you just want it to be on the entire time. Completely up to you. We'll leave it on. Outside level. Disable, meaning I don't want it to do anything at all. So now you'll notice, there it is. Of course, I can initialize it. If I want to disable it, 
let's uh, our, you know do the on off let's do that real quick so I click on on off here and I haven't done with this one see right there on off for each one that's so cool now the other thing is you'll notice a little tab here okay this is the or I'm sorry the t this tab here that says in it as I click on stuff you know, like for example, I click on this show. It allowed me to select the speed for this particular show or the speed for this particular show. So when I select this button, it selects my color mixing, but it doesn't, or, you know, this particular tab, but the tab doesn't change. Well, darn it. How do you do that? Well, let's say you want the tab to change along with it. So when you move these wheels, because let's say you map the wheels to your speed, I'll show you this in a second even more, uh, then um, you'd want to do select. So let's kind of go over that for a second, okay? Let's say that we have position circle. See right there, that little position circle right here. Okay, we're going to right click and we're going to link to console and we want it to act uh, button activation. Okay, now again, you'll notice that it's a flash button. So we just have to kind of like, sorry, Windows has been kind of acting up on me or because it's, you know, running on a Mac. doesn't really care for this one too much. We're going to have it on and off with disable okay now it selects that particular button there okay let's see again what was this one this is position circle phase okay and uh, I'm gonna do a, the regular position circle so I'm gonna right click link to console button activation we're gonna have that as number two then we just right click on number two and I know this is a few extra steps but whatever uh, it's okay good I'm making sure it's still recording I'm gonna tell it again on and off and disable because I don't want the outside button to have anything okay so there you go you'll notice we're switching back and forth but the tab isn't changing okay now why is that important the tab changes well let's say your wheels here right let's say I'm making a, a wheel for my speed link to console and I'm going to do it to the first wheel. Now my wheel will change. Maybe. Hold on a second. Uh, let's do one for phasing. Link to console. Button phasing. Okay. Now that I'm trying to remember, these are actually slightly different. So let's try to remember here. We're going to right click on the wheel. Oh, that's right. Huh? Okay. Okay. My apologies, the wheels are different, okay? So we're going to click on the star, and uh, we're going to do page. Or Which one is it? It's one of these. Hang on one second. It's one of these little ones here. Oh, there we go. You have the page dimmer which allows you to control the overall page or dim. So let's do that real quick. And the wheel resolution, that's how tight you want the resolution to be um, as far as, you know, how sensitive. So like, for example, with that, it's on the main page. So that controls, it controls for the main page. So the overall show. So no matter which options are these, now I don't really care for it controlling the entire show. I like my wheels to control individual aspects. If you wanted to control your entire show, then by all means do that but I don't want that so we're gonna we're gonna kinda oh, delete that or you can unsend it whichever you want and it's one of these it's been a while since I've done this I'm gonna have to switch over to mine real quick to remember which one it was Oh, there we go. Button dimmer function. So we're going to have the first one be the button dimmer function. Okay. At the selected page and the selected button. That means that no matter where you're at, it's going to move that particular one, right? So we're going to go to position circle phasing. And you'll notice how it's moving the dimmer. Oops, sorry. There we go. You'll notice how it's moving the dimmer. See right here? Dimmer is moving. Yeehaw. But then we're going to select the other one the, the circle and it doesn't change the tab see where this is important we want this wheel now to switch tab now it'll do that if I click it see position circle 
and it changes that. So if I move it at, let's say, 46% or 38%, right, and I move this one, it's still, you know, it's, it remembers for an individual tab. But if I click the buttons, it doesn't switch tabs. Now, first, you're like, well, that sucks because I don't want to sit there and move my mouse. Not a big deal. Not a big deal at all. We know that button one is for position circle phasing. So we're going to right click on position circle phasing and we're going to select a button and then we hit one again. So one, when you see it there, there's a button activation and a select a button, okay? Now let me kind of readjust myself here. Now we're going to do the same thing for number two. Number two is the regular circle. Okay, so we're going to select or link to console select a button and we do number two so now what happens is as I click there hang on one second let's make sure oops okay you'll notice that I accidentally clicked the wrong one it says position circle position circle phasing not a big deal if you mess up like that like I just did because all my stuff is kinda backwards you can just change it around there or you can delete it so you can manually change it but I'm going to delete it. So let's see. I was on button two. So I'm going to right click. I'm going to click on this one here, the circle, link to console, select the button, and two. Oops, not select. You see how I confuse myself now? Okay. So again, we click the circle. You have to regular click first to make sure it's actually selected. Then you go to select and there. Now you'll notice that as I switch the tabs change. So what happens is activate activates the button and then select selects that tab. You have to have both for it to actually activate the button and select it. And the reason they have it like this is because if you select for example the color mixing right I don't really want a dimmer tab for my color mixing. Maybe I don't want my colors when I select the colors. Let's say I have this button, these buttons for colors and then I have these buttons here for movements. I want my movements to switch tabs, but if I jumped into a different color, I don't want, the, maybe I don't want this particular tab to uh, switch for colors. It's completely up to you. So again, this is fully programmable however you want. These buttons that are flash buttons, they can be flash, they don't have to be. Even this one, for example, remember the one I, I just showed you for the color mixing all? Just have it on off or leave it off there so you can make that as a flash button let's mix that for a second see there's a flash button there so let's say for example I just I was making a strobe and when I hold that down as strobes when I let go it doesn't you can do that with these as well it doesn't really matter so yay for that